Princess steals Sapphire away from Australia, Crystal Cruises shuts down, and is the Australian cruise ban about to be overturned? I'm Adrian, the Cruise and Travel Guy. As always, thank you for subscribing to my channel, and if you haven't done so yet, please hit that subscribe button. This week, Princess Cruises announced that they, much like their sister line Carnival, would be redeploying one of their ships from Australia to the US. The Sapphire Princess's voyages between August 28th and October 29th have been cancelled to allow the ship to head to the US West Coast, where she is guaranteed to earn the company revenue. This latest suspension means that based on current scheduling, Australia won't see a princess ship in our region until October. To that end, as we know all too well, the Australian cruise ban is set to end on February 17th, but the question remains as to whether or not it will be extended. Over the past week, the local cruise industry has garnered a lot of press, from radio and TV to print media. Cruising has been a hot topic, and this is no doubt being pushed along by the fantastic efforts of ATAG and the thousands of cruise lovers who've made their voices heard. New South Wales State Premier Dominic Perrottet echoed his support for the cruise industry earlier this week when he posed the question that we've all been asking for months, which is, if Australians can fly overseas to cruise, why can't we cruise from our own backyard? Perrottet confirmed that he would raise the issue at National Cabinet on February 10th. True to his word, the Premier did raise the discussion point at National Cabinet, and finally, after almost two years, we have the very first small but positive steps towards a local cruising resumption. A statement from the Prime Minister's office read, National Cabinet discussed the resumption of cruises in Australia, noting that there are shared responsibilities for the resumption of cruises between the Commonwealth, states and territories. National Cabinet agreed that following a decision by the Commonwealth to lift the biosecurity orders that currently prevent cruise ships from coming to Australia, that states and the Northern Territory would then determine when recommencement of cruises would occur in each jurisdiction. The Commonwealth, New South Wales, Victoria and Queensland agreed to work with the industry to implement new protocols to enable the resumption of cruising over coming months. It still remains that the federal government will need to lift the ban on cruising nationally, but I believe we have the very first steps towards the Commonwealth making that decision and allowing the states to take up the reins and follow through to completion to see cruising finally come back to Australia. Whilst Australia continues to contend with just the thought of cruising, in the US, cruise lines are starting to drop some of their stricter health requirements. Norwegian Cruise Line has informed agents and guests that from March 1st, passengers won't be required to wear masks indoors, while children under five will not require proof of vaccination. The company's official recommendation remains that masks continue to be worn inside and even outside where social distancing can't be observed. The actual requirement to wear one, though, will be no more. The somewhat contradictory position is believed to be targeting those passengers who have been putting off a return to cruising because of mask mandates and their potential impact on the onboard experience. Carnival and Disney Cruise Lines have also opened up cruising to unvaccinated passengers who have been diagnosed with and recovered from COVID. Passengers wishing to sail under this arrangement must provide written proof in the form of lab results or a formalized letter from their doctor indicating that they had tested positive within around 90 days of departure and have since recovered. Whether these changes are something you agree with or not, it really highlights how far behind Australia is that these discussions are taking place in other parts of the world while we still don't know when cruising will come back locally. Hopefully we can start to play catch up. A couple of weeks ago, I reported on the bankruptcy of Genting Hong Kong and the subsequent impact to the company's subsidiary luxury cruise line Crystal Cruises. Unpaid fuel bills resulted in warrants being issued for the ship's arrests, and those arrests were finally executed last week. Now the cruise line has officially announced that this is the end. Their US-based office will have closed by the time this video is published, and shoreside staff have had their employment terminated. The ship's mortgage holders have appointed V-ships to manage the vessels going forward, and crew on board are reportedly confused and unsure about what comes next for them. It's a mighty fall for the awarded luxury line. It's expected that the ships will be sold, and perhaps a new company will rise from the ashes. At least that's the hope. I wish all the best to the affected crew and employees. 
Back home, Royal Caribbean have amended their approach to future cruise credits. Credits that were issued as a result of the global suspension had both a book buy and sale buy date associated with them. Royal Caribbean has simplified their approach to these credits, removing the book buy deadline and instead allowing the credit to be used anytime up to the sale buy deadline. Celebrity cruisers have also initiated a similar program and the extra flexibility should help guests manage their credits and future cruise planning. Well, that's about it for this week's cruise news update. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do. And if you'd like, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at The Cruise and Travel Guy. And if you're looking to book a cruise at some point, you can head to my website, thecruiseandtravelguide.com.au. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. This week, Princess Cruise Lines announced that they, much like their sister line, this latest suspension that the New South Wales State Premier Dominic Perrottet initialed. What? True to his word, the Premier did raise the discussion point at National Cabinet, and for the first time in almost two years, we have the very first. Ah. Unpaid fuel bills executed. Mm -mm. Unpaid fuel bills warranted. Nope. Celebrity cruisers have also initiated a similar program, and it's expected that something about the something is good.